Are you addicted to Hot Pot? I'm, I'm not, but I also really, really like it. I can quit anytime I want to, okay? Hello and welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. And today we are going to be reviewing Hot Pot Holic. Yes, this is a small trick taking game, very cute, from uh, David Cheng, the designer, mm -hmm. and from Clueless Games, which is part of the umbrella that is Taiwan board game design, unsurprisingly, from Taiwan. This is about uh, eating delicious hot pot, making sure that you get the food on your plate and then in your tum tums. Yep. I'll go ahead and show you how this is played. In Hot Pot Holic, players are fighting over the delicious food that's in the hot pot up here. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, win tricks or maybe lose tricks so that they can collect items over here, place them on their plate, and then eventually move them from their plate to their stomachs and enjoy the delicious hot pot food. Now, anything that is in your stomach can score for end game points up here. Um, and all of that I'll explain after I explain the main mechanism of how this trick-taking game actually works. So starting with the first player, players are going to be playing cards and every following player has to play a different numbered card. So we have here, this is saying that the K, which is the highest number, so it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, K. So it's saying the higher numbers are going to take first, second, and third and fourth place. So from here we'd have first place, second place, third place, and fourth place for the cards. Now, if this happened to be flipped over, this would be just the opposite. So this is saying that lower cards are the ones that actually are going to be winning the tricks and placing thus far. So we would start with this and it would be first place, second place, third place, fourth place. So what's important about knowing your place is that that is the order that you will take stuff from the hot pot, but it will also determine how much you take. So here with zero being the highest ranked suit, um, we'd come over here to the one and this person would be the first place. So first place means that you get to gain the first player token. Congratulations, Blue. It also means that you move up on the heat track, which is good for points at the end of the game. And then what it means is that you get your first pick over here at the either the pot or eating food. So you have one action point because you're the first place and this person will go ahead and they will eat their nice little uh, potato over here. I'm not sure what that is. Then the person in second place is going to get two actions and those two actions have to either both be in the pot or both be eating. Since they only have one card, they're gonna go ahead and grab two different cards from the pot and they're going for color diversity because that's what they're doing for this objective over here. Then pink gets a turn and now they have three because they're third place options. Now there's only two cards up here and there's only one in front of them. So either way, they're going to lose some of their actions and they're going to go ahead and take two from the middle right here. Finally, fourth place has four actions, but once again, there's not enough going on. So they're just going to go ahead and eat these two right here and empty out their plate. Then everything that was in the middle goes into the hot pot. If there was anything left over in the hot pot, that would just stay there. And then you play again. This game plays across eight rounds and then you're gonna add up all the scores and the scores are based on whatever is over here. Now there is a variety of cards that you can pick from. There's different categories for each one of these scoring cards and those can be changed throughout the game. So the ones that we have particularly right now um, is on the heat track. It's simply depending on how far you are on the heat track will determine how many points you get. Um, over here we have the pairs and the quartet which just means that when you've eaten pairs um, those can be worth the amount of points that the pairs are. So the zero pair is going to be worth zero, whereas a pair of fours would be worth four points. It also says that if you happen to get all four zeros, you get 15 points. That's just kind of a special thing there. Then finally, balance for every set of uh, each color that you have, you would gain 10 points. Like I said, you play eight rounds and then you score up and that's Hot Pot Holic. <laughs> Okay, I just wanna start off with a little complaint that I have, and that is the way that the tricks actually work and who wins and who loses a trick, depending on which way that little middle card is flipped. So I think it can be confusing um, when the zero is faced up, you're saying that the lowest card is the highest ranked in the trick. And so that is a little bit hard to teach. And then, um, I mean, the K being the highest, that's just something, I feel like that's not as bad, but particularly for someone who's not used to playing a lot of trick-taking games, especially ones where the 
the rankings can change. I think that's a little confusing to teach. I think for me, the biggest problem is that the rule book uses the word highest when it's also saying that the zero, which is the lowest card, can be the highest. And yeah. so I would have, I would not have used highest. Uh, I would maybe say strongest or best mm -hmm. or winning. It's just some other uh, some other synonym to mean that because I agree. If to, to sit there and explain to someone and say the zero is the highest and then the one is higher than the three, it sounds like you're taking crazy pills trying to explain that. So, right, right. But, so that's just a small complaint of mine that I think that that could trip a couple people up, especially mm -hmm. reading the rule book. I found that a little confusing. Yeah, small question of verbiage, but the concept of it I think is actually mm -hmm. quite simple. I like that in this game. Uh, because people, I think, can generally understand, right, um, depending on which way that card is facing up, like, oh, nice, the zero is really good now because it was really bad earlier uh, in terms of ranking. But I also like that it's more than just do you want to win a trick, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to be lower in the ranking so that you can eat three pieces of food at once. Yeah. And a lot of times the person who wins this game isn't necessarily the one who wins the most tricks, so there's the offset between winning tricks to move up the little heat track and then also playing worse cards to grab up and eat more food. Right. That's fun. Well, and you could technically win more than you could move on the heat track because there's only seven spaces and there's, yeah. Um, yeah, there's eight tricks. Yeah, there's eight turns. So you could, you could overwin. <laughs> But you can't overeat in this game. But uh, well, not to mention that also another fun way of moving up that heat track is if you do a perfect eat, right? If you mm -hmm. have three food cards on top of your plate and then you take third place, you get to eat all three of those. Like I like that. I like the co the concept of you ate so well. Here's a little bonus. <laughs> Here's heat. a little bonus heat. There you go. Yeah, I um, art imitates life. Speaking of heat track, I really enjoy that the scoring cards are not the same every single game. So you have that variety that you can switch out. There's definitely ones that I would play with more than others. Um, like I don't particularly enjoy the one, uh, the heat track where it says that just the loser or like the lowest on the heat track loses eight points. I find that to be less enjoyable than like the winner gets some points. Especially because uh, the other one is like, like first, second and third place earns diminishing points. Yeah, or there's somewhere just however far you get depends on points, you know, like. It just depends. Um, so there's there's ones I prefer over that, but I think that there's some cool things. I like that that you know one of them affects the last card that you hold on to. It becomes the suit that gets multiplied, and so it's it's a fascinating thing how in this game you have the numbers affecting the actual trick taking part, but then the suits affect the scoring. Yeah, the the I think that that might be a trip for a trip up. I should say for people who are. Uh, very avid trick-taking fans where they're like, wait, the colors don't matter. It's like yeah. may follow, and you're like, no, no, it's even easier than that. Just don't worry about the color. Uh, and then, yeah, the color will come in on scoring and those those types of things, which I think is neat. That's a neat way to do it. It makes it so that you're pretty much just playing with, like, a few values, right? Zero, mm -hmm. one, two, three, king. Or if you're playing with a higher player count, zero through five and king. That's a very clean way of keeping the king as the highest card. Mm -hmm. But you can also take some cards out for a smaller deck for smaller player count. Um, the cards that you play into a trick after people take food and eat food, those cards go into the hot pot. Mm -hmm. I think what that what this game shines at is doing a lot with a little, actually. You know, just right. And so then, game. then the suits do matter, too, because they don't matter for playing, but they may matter for in the future you may want that red card for some reason. Right. You know, so you're you're putting it out so that you can get the right cards in the future and hopefully not your opponents. I, and I find that particularly clever, like the Rainbow uh, from All Play mm -hmm. earlier this year did that same thing. The cards you play go into the middle. Uh, but this one does it with like a small thematic touch. You know, this is a trick taking that actually has some little theme to it where yeah. the different ways of collecting things, all that stuff makes sense. And also, like, one of the objectives is, like, meat lovers. So you're like, yeah, beef and pork belly and shrimp are extra points. I want zero cabbage. <laughs> cabbage is negative points. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> cabbage is worst. Um, I think the art is cute. I think the theme actually helps teach the game that idea of there's a communal pot. And from that pot, we're putting stuff on our plates, letting it cool. And then we're going to eat it. And at the end of the day, it only matters what you eat at a buffet. It doesn't matter what you put in your plate. In fact, sometimes... Uh, the, in game, it's not a negative if you have leftover food, which no. I appreciate. That <laughs> but would have been it, but in real life, it is because they'll charge you. Yeah, at an all-you-can-eat place. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that'll be like a bonus uh, scoring card they'll Aww. they'll put out in the future. But yeah, 
very very neat presentation. Uh, our family, our our daughter, played this with us and just laughed and laughed and smiled at all the the cute illustrations and stuff. Yeah. It looks so good. I do think that the. The way that there's so many scoring cards out was a little advanced for her. It says 12 plus on the box. And I don't think it needs to be that high of an age, but I do think to like play and really understand the strategy. Um, I know our daughter at nine, like gamer nine year old, would definitely take quite a few games to to really understand all the objectives because they do change every round. But it's fresh. That is not just a one trick pony. Like mm-hmm. red cards are worth a point or something. You know, I mean, there's, yeah. there's some games that are great games that have a very simple scoring. This has a little bit of layer to it. So it, yeah, the cutesy art maybe belies like a little bit thinky of a game. That a game that also has like five ranks in the entire deck of cards. Yeah. It's it's neat that it's a small game that feels small, but also does feel like there's a little bit more to it. Right. So so scoring wise, how would you how would you come down on this one? Um as a score, I'm giving this a seven point five. I think the theme is great. I think the theme wit fits with the mechanics well and makes it easier to teach. Uh, we also tried the two player variant and it adds a little bit of like a little extra robot player that gets played, but it's very simple. Um, and I don't feel like that gets in the way. So I think two player wise, it works well for us. Um, so yeah, 7.5, I think it's a cute game and I like it. For me, this is an eight. I really enjoy games that have a small footprint and just feel like they punch above their weight class just a little bit. And so this is one of those for me. Uh, and as you said, a, a trick taking game that plays well, even down to two players mm-hmm. is something that's a bonus. So that yeah. that helps bump it up to an eight. I think that this is a very fun game. So yeah, Hot Pot Holic Plus. Just adorable. Just adorable. It gets a seal of approval from us at the Dice Tower. It's adorable. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. And this is Hot Pot Holic. It's adorable. Go get some Hot Pot. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another video from the Dice Tower. Hey, you want to learn more about us? Communicate with us. We have a Facebook group. We have a Discord channel. Lots of different ways to get involved with the Dice Tower. You can find that in our link tree link below. So just click that, it will take you, and you can communicate with us on Facebook, join our Facebook groups. There's lots of cool things that you can find and become part of the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Bassett. Oh, it's the ghost. I always think the ghost is the bunny because it's white. It doesn't oh, have... It's got a little It doesn't have bunny ears. How do you assume that that thing... Like, there's one thing that this action is called in the world He's ever. He's wearing a hat. It could be slicked back. He could be like a greaser bunny. Greaser bunny. Mm-hmm. Obviously. <laughs>